here, and uh, I am here with an update on Prince and Peaches, right? And um, so today we're beginning remote collar training with Peaches and Prince, and I want to share that with you for those of you who are interested in remote collar training, don't know what it is, think you know what it is. Um, Basically, uh, you have a remote and then the dog has a special collar and it's a way for us to communicate with them. Uh, we call it a pressure, just like uh, you know we would use the leash pressure. Um, and initially, uh, it's a sensation that's odd or foreign to the dog, right? So they don't know what it is and it can be distracting. So even though we've been working for a little over a week now on um, you know, sit and down and going to place and coming and call, all of that stuff. Uh, this is actually in the beginning kind of going to throw some distraction in because they're going to feel this little tickly sensation and uh, not really know what to do with it. But that's where, where we're going to use leash guidance as needed, as needed, because they're pretty good at, at this point, you know, when they hear the command, they do the command. But if we need to, we use leash guidance. Uh, and we are doing what's called low-level remote collar training, which means initially what we do is we find their working level uh, or perception level, which is basically the level at which they just feel something. You know, again, this this um, these use a technology much like a tens machine, which is um, if, if you know what a tens machine is, they use it on humans for pain relief. Um, it's it's kind of like a, a tapping sensation. Um, so again, in very low levels, we're just initially trying to find out what level do they just even feel something, okay? So um, for Prince, currently it's, we're at a five. And, and this remote, this is um, the brand that we use is by eCollar Technologies. This happens to be the ET300. And um, so, this, this remote system has 100, 100 levels, which, you know, 100, yikes, that sounds like a lot, right? But this is actually what we call a soft system, meaning there's plenty out there that are, are much stronger, more powerful than this, but um, it has 100 levels, and the reason why that's a good thing, because there are collars out there that might have 12 levels or 15 levels. Uh, this is not the kind that you get at, like, you know, big box stores. This is a high quality remote collar system. But um, big difference in between having 12 or 15 levels or 10 levels, somebody told me the other day they had one that had nine levels, is that when you have 100 levels, there's, a, there's much more nuance between one level and the next. In other words, if you're using a system that has, you know, 10, 12, 15 levels, the jump from one level to the next is much larger, okay? So let's say you're at a level eight and you go to a level nine. Well, maybe level eight isn't enough and the dog doesn't feel anything or isn't responding to it, but level nine is too much, right? So this allows us to really customize, this system allows us to really customize and use the lowest necessary, le you know, no lowest level necessary to communicate with the dog. And that's really what we want. So we can be very nuanced with it. Um, you can, someone once said, and it's true, you can whisper or you can shout with these things when you're communicating with the dog. So right now what we're beginning is the beginning. We're beginning training them about this and what does that pressure or sensation mean, right? They have no idea. So we pair it with the leash uh, and collar to teach them what does that mean, right? So in the beginning, before we, when we started uh, just the basic commands with the leash and collar, initially we're not even using a word, we're just using leash pressure and or luring with food, right? To teach them the positions, then we add the command to that. Now they're, they, you know, if you, for example, with a sit, leash pressure up, dog's bottom hits the ground. As soon as it does, you relax the leash, okay? Lots of reps of that, and then we start adding work. We say sit, and then we put the leash pressure on. Dog already knows what the leash pressure means, so they start to learn. We're pairing the command with the action or the, the leash pressure that we've taught them, right? So now they're beginning to learn what the word means, right? And so now, 
They know what the word means and or the leash pressure. And now we're layering this over top. Okay, and why are we doing that? Many reasons, but in eventually that we can have off leash, no leash attached. This is, again, we like to call it an invisible leash. From this to that receiver, this transmitter to that receiver, we can communicate with the dog, right? And so that um, initially we're going to use the pressure of the collar paired with the word and the leash pressure if needed, this if needed, um, to teach them what that means. But down the road, we're gonna transition from, because initially what we do is press and hold. When they complete the command, the pressure goes off, just like pulling up on the leash, okay? So after lots and lots of repetitions, we're gonna move to prompting. So instead of pressing and holding until they complete the command, we just say the command and tap, right? Oh, and, and they, you know, do the command. Let's say sit in this case, right? Lots of repetitions of that, and then we just use the command. And then if they, you know, they don't do it or they wait too long, we can tap to remind them, right? Um, and then fast forward to uh, accountability level, if you will. So if you, you know you've worked with your dog, you've done thousands you know, of repetitions with them, they know what the command is, they break command, you can say no, tap, repeat command, okay? So that's kind of the, uh, uh, in a nutshell, the transition of training, basically how it works. Um, and obviously, eventually, through lots of training, repetition, consistency, you don't have to use this very much at all because the dog understands you've taught them what the commands are. And the only thing that this is then for is if they disobey, they break command, they blow you off, you know, whatever. Um, you can remind them, hey, you know, you got to do that, okay? So, so today, again, what, what we've done, what I've already done is find in this moment, here in this environment, his working level, which is five, okay? And again, that is the level at which he just feels something, right? So we're gonna walk around and I'm gonna pair it with the sit. And basically what you're gonna see me do is um, I'm gonna say the word, and right after I say the word, I'm gonna press and hold the button, okay? As soon as his bottom hits the ground, I release and say good, all right? So pressure, same as pressure as we used before. Although right now I'm not gonna use this unless I need it, all right? And sometimes that happens. Again, you know, this this is distracting to them at first. They're like, what is that, you know? Uh, what is that feeling that I'm feeling? So uh, that's why we still have the leash on to, for guidance in case we need it, all right? So break, all right, good boy. So here's how it goes. And, and these guys are pretty good at sitting, typically, right away. So it's gonna happen pretty quickly. Sit. Good. Good boy. Break. Good boy. Let's go, stop. Sit. Good. Okay, so when you hear me say sit, right after that, I'm pressing and holding the button. As soon as you hear me say good, I take my finger off the button. So it's a continuous, all right? It's continuous until his bottom hits the ground. So it's basically just like leash pressure before, teaching him that the quicker he completes the command, the sooner the pressure is gone. So he actually has control over the pressure at this point, right? Good boy. Let's go. Sit. Good. Let's go. Sit. Good. Good boy. This guy gives really good eye contact, as you can see. He's paying attention. He loves this. try to move out of the sit, I would simply mark it with wrong, press and hold, you know, wrong, and then I would repeat the command, press and hold, okay? So, um, so I would pair this with the sit, I can pair this with the down, I can pair it with the place command, right? And so for down, let's go. Okay. 
place on my hand there. Good boy. Down. Good boy. Very good. So I gave him a little too much affection there, which, you know, we're going to work on that. Like, I should be able to eventually, you know, do whatever, love on him, jazz him up, but he still remains in that down, okay? So right now, um, I want to just kind of keep it calm, but I will add in distractions like that later to proof that he understands down means stay down no matter what's going on around you. That's really important. What good is a command if they don't hold it under, you know, any and all situations, right? Let's go. Good boy. Again, when, as soon as you hear me say place, I start to press and hold. As soon as he's on there, I mark it with good, release, um, and then I tap him down. Pressure goes on. As soon as he's in the down, I say good and release. Okay? It's that simple. So, just wanted to share with you about that because I know there's a lot of folks that, um, you know, they have misconceptions about remote collar training. Um, you know, some people call them shock collars. Um, they think they're horrible, terrible, bad. Um, anything really can be horrible, terrible, and bad um, if you don't use it properly, if you don't know how to use it properly, right? So, again, these are low levels, very low levels. It's just where they start to feel a tiny sensation. It's just a way to communicate with them. Uh, at this point, is what we're teaching. And, um, and it's great because it allows you, over time, and with training allows you much more reliability in terms of your dog following commands and you know let's face it if you give your dog a command let's say they're running towards the road and you say come and they don't they don't they keep going they can get hit by a car they can run off and get in a fight with a dog I mean there's just so many things that can happen right so using these really makes your dog a lot more reliable and you can which expands their world you know you can there's places you can have your dog off leash um, running and you know in a, in a park or when you go to the beach or whatever and by the way these things are, are um, waterproof they can go swimming with them on so uh, there's just lots of advantages to them they're also great just in terms of communication you know not yanking and cranking and pulling in the you know on the leash and the dog's neck and all that if you've got a dog that you know is, is um, a really strong puller or whatever. I mean, obviously you can teach them not to uh, with a leash and a collar too, but it's just great to have something like this. That's, I always say, because it's true, it's less combative, right? It's a push of a button and it's a simple communication between you and your dog. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you. If you have questions about it, comments, I'm open. Uh, love to hear from you guys. Again, Terry with Good Dog Coaching and Pet Care. Post them in the comment section or you can email me at info at goodogcoaching.com. All right, take care.